And, and uh, you know, people, what people don't understand is Judaism. Uh, they think Judaism is just kind of the, uh, you know, half brother of Christianity, but they're not. They, they, uh, uh, Judaism, uh, or people who are Jews, basically, uh, what it, this is going to open another <laughs> another chapter. I'm just going to have to actually, it has to be con continued on a different series now. <laughs> because Judaism, when you talk about Judaism, you talk about uh, a faith. What people don't understand, especially in America and, and, and Europe as well, uh, most people in the churches, they don't understand Jewish, being a Jew or Jewishness or uh, being a Jew is actually practicing a faith which is Judaism and that is following uh, yeah. Moses you know following followers of Moses basically yeah which is different than being Israeli yeah. which is you're but, born into that citizenship yeah, yeah. but or, Israelites when you say Israelites they were children of Israel yes as simple as that Israel whose name was changed to Israel from Jacob from Jacob so those are Israelites. Now, if anybody wants to claim that I am an Israelite, that they have to actually prove their ancestry back to Israel, yeah. back to Jacob. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be easy, <laughs> if, if not difficult. It's not going to be easy. So anybody living in Israel doesn't mean they're Israelites. And anybody being a Jew doesn't mean they're Israelites or pro-Israelis. There are lots of Jews who are against the, uh, the regime in, in Israel. Yes. right at this moment yes and they have been so and, and those are practice practicing Jews Judaism is basically a faith same as Christianity same as anything else any other religion or faith what we we might not consider ourselves as a Christian as practicing a religion because we call we'd like to call ourselves practicing a faith believing in believing in some cer certain principles and following a faith, not a religion, because religion, when you talk about religion, you talk about rules, rules of duties, do's and don'ts. And that is what's happening with uh, Judaism. Judaism have 10 commandments, and then they came up with 613 more, or all together, 613 laws, mm -hmm. which they have on their shoulders, and, and yeah. all those threads mm -hmm. that have you know the, those strings that are coming out of their shawls that they always wear is indicating of the 613 laws that they they follow every day and they believe they're abiding by those laws but um, Jesus comes and says, you can't abide with all those laws because as soon as you wake up as soon as you have a, the wrong thought that is it you've broken the law and once you've broken one law you've broken them all so this is simple. It's saying that we're not under the law, we're above the law. And, and he was accused, his, his uh, disciples were accused of picking corn on, on the Sabbath and this and that, yeah. going to the temple, breaking the rules of the Judaism. So what I'm trying to say is, being a Jew or Jewishness is not a race, it's a faith. Mm -hmm. So you can be born in India and uh, in, in a family of Hinduism who is practicing Hinduism mm -hmm. and then suddenly they realize no actually I don't like this I want to be a Jew mm -hmm. and you can be a Jew yeah the same as any other religion mm -hmm. uh, you, you can be a Jew you can be born into a Jewish family but you're not a Jew you're not nothing when you're born you're nothing yes but the idea the uh, uh, understanding is when you go to Israel, uh, all those Middle Eastern countries, when you go into them, and I know, I, I, I can tell you, you can ask me, I'll tell you, because <laughs> that's how it is. Go, you go to any of those Middle Eastern countries, they consider you, uh, 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 your religion is almost as good as your nationality. It's like, it's, it's like, it's your DNA. It's just like a nationality. Yeah. So if you're born in Turkey, the understanding is, is you're Muslim. Mm -hmm. If you're born in uh, Iran, the understanding is uh, you're by, by, by and large, you're Muslim. Yeah. 
Yeah. There are so now there are different sex of it, but that's not the point we're yeah. talking about. Yeah. The same the same exact thing is happening. If you're born in Israel, the the, the, the understanding the it's given that you are a Jew. You understand, but you're not necessarily a Jew because you have to actually practice Judaism to be yeah, a Jew. Exactly. But this is uh, my argument: is with all the uh, churches who believe that Judaism is just our half brother as as Christians. You know, Christianity yeah. and Judaism is just half brothers. They're not. They're not. They're nothing the like. Mm -hmm. Nothing like at all, mm -hmm. because uh, we are above the law. They're under the law. Yeah. You know, I've had this discussion with actual uh, uh, what are these Jewish Christians they call Messianic themselves? Jews. Messianic Jews. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, I just don't get it. You either Jew or a Christian. Mm -hmm. You cannot be a Jewish Christian. You just cannot be. The, the, the reason they say that, and it's usually Western people that say that. There is no, there is no actual Israeli who say I'm a I'm a Jewish Christian. They'll never say that. If, if they convert to Christianity, they will never say that. Because they know Judaism is not the same as Christianity. And you can't be a Jew and Christian because you, it's not a race. It's not a nationality. It is taught that way. It is considered that way in the country of Israel and in most countries. But it doesn't mean that it's true because nationality has nothing to do with your religion or your faith. You have to grow and make up your mind that you want to practice that faith or, or religion. Mm -hmm. But uh, Messianic Jews, they think by race we are Jews. We're based, they want to basically say we are related to Jesus. Yeah. We're related to Mary. We're related to Mo, you, Joseph. We're related to Israel, mm -hmm. Jacob, and, and our forefather is Abraham. That's all they want to say. Well, we can say that because Jesus says that very clearly and plainly. He says, out of these stones, God can make children of Abraham. Mm -hmm. So why are we going around the bush, beating about the bush, just to prove that I am so close to Abraham? There's no difference. Mm -hmm. You can be an American and your forefather can be Abraham because you are following the laws. Uh, you're following Jesus. Mm -hmm. Because Jesus says, if you're not listening to me, you're not, your father is not Abraham. Your father is Satan because you're not listening to me. Mm -hmm. And who is he talking to? He is actually talking to the Jews, yeah. to the rabbis, the to the, to the, the, yeah, the, to, to the teachers of the law. Actually, they, they know it all. Yeah. And, and they are offended because they say, you're calling us illegitimate children of Abraham. You know? And he says, yeah, you're worse than that. Yeah, you're sons of Satan. Sons of Satan. So how clear can, can that be? But then we have people more zealous in the churches about Judaism and Jews and Israelites, or Israel, Israelis, not Israelites, Israelis, mm -hmm. than the Israelis themselves, because they say they are chosen people. Uh, the reason God says they are chosen people is because God chose that nation to bring Jesus into that nation. Into the that, world. Into the world, yeah. from that nation. Yes. So that is why it was a chosen nation. That's the only reason. Yeah, and he picked not because they and were he wonderful. Picked the most stiff yeah, exactly. stubborn, so we would not have because, an example. Not because they were wonderful, but because they were actually horrible. Mm -hmm. they, he picked them from the worst place and from Nazareth, mm -hmm. and that was again the worst, the worst place. Yeah. So he picked Jesus, or he brought Jesus into this world in a place that you, you wouldn't even keep your dog there. You know, if you like it in this language, you want to talk it that way. He says, God says, I will frustrate the wisdom of the wise and destroy the intelligence of the intelligent. So what that means is I, I'm doing something amazing that you cannot figure it out with your wisdom. Yeah. You know, people couldn't figure out why Jesus comes if anything good comes out of Nazareth. Yep. You know, and it's always doing that, and that's again, that's kind of that's that's the nature of God. In the, you, you can probably find out things like that in your own personal life, that God has done things that shocked other people in your life and shocked other people. What? Who? Who did this? You? Or when? You know, when? This, all that, all those things. If you look back in your your own 
person online, I don't know who you are, whether you, you're listening, you will have, I can, I can pick up lots of examples from my own life and say this, 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 this. That shocks people. You just think, what? No, you. Mm -hmm. From there, in this place. Mm -hmm. You know, but he, he does that because that's his nature. So anyway, we were talking about uh, this Judaism that is not a race. What people consider it, or actually, uh, it's like a given fact that when you say somebody is a Jew, they just consider that as a race. It's a race. It's not a race. That doesn't mean somebody is a Jew doesn't mean from Israel. They're Israelites or Bani Israel. But they're Israelites. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it doesn't mean they're Israelites. The children of Israel, yeah. not at all. There, there are Israelites everywhere. There are um, Muslims everywhere. There are uh, Hindu uh, people who practice Hinduism mm -hmm. or Hindus uh, mm -hmm. everywhere. You can find them everywhere now, especially nowadays because they, everybody is traveling. Yeah. But even going back, we're not talking about immigration and all that. We're talking about this is not a race. This is a faith just as any other faith or any other religion. And it's not in fact a faith, it's a religion. Because they're following a certain set of rules. And, and I, this is what I was going to say. I talked to one of these Messianic Jews. Uh, and uh, this guy, the leader of that congregation, asked me. I went there as a, as a visitor. And, and I was invited there. And, and I went there. And, and this guy at the end of their ceremonies and they were doing all those uh, funny dances and all that they just think you know that that can make them closer to god but it's the same as um, what they do in india there are people who sleep on nails thinking that if they suffer today they can have a better life hereafter you know it's the same you can't there, there are uh, uh, moments mm -hmm. we were working i was working with some moments in a factory when they when we went to the changing room it was shocking to me i just thought what are these they're wearing on the, the underwear it was like <laughs> special <laughs> they had to be made out of special garments and and he just you know he just uh, discussed it with with you with my wife yeah <laughs> and, and, and she said, oh yeah, they're Mormons, they, have, they believe that they have to wear certain shorts. <laughs> so I said, so if they wear this, this, this special shorts, they'll go to heaven? So that's probably what they believe. But I, anyway, I'm not, I'm not discussing, what I'm saying is, free, um, I was going to say Freemasons, uh, Messianic Jews, uh, when we were there, uh, this this guy asked me at the end of their uh, ceremony or, or session, he asked me, he said, so what, God, what did God tell you about uh, Jews? And I just went, well, you know, I, I, first of all, I don't, I don't like saying I don't ever like to say God told me something you know because I never I, you, you hardly ever hear me God say God told me say this you know God told me to do this yeah I, God has told me a lot of things but you know I, I, and I feel it in me in my spirit and I do them as best as I can but I don't announce it you know I don't go announcing it, God told me to do this. I might have done that, I don't know, I'm not going to say deny it altogether. But uh, uh, it's something that I try to avoid as best as I can, really, because um, usually when people say, uh, God told me this, uh, usually people in power positions, they say that, and, and they're basically saying, shut up. You can't say anything over that. Um, so I don't, I don't really like that. Um, I, I don't want to say whoever says that is wrong. I don't. I don't want to, you know, condemn them. But I don't try. I don't do that willy nilly. I'll do that if if I say that I really mean it. But anyway, uh, he said, "What God told you about you? This is what God told me. This is what I told him." I said, "God, 
God has shown me that Jews are under the law just as much as Muslims are under the law and he just set him on fire because obviously they don't like uh, Muslims and just as much as they don't like Jews but in the middle here I am saying something that they, that is contrary to, to what they believe and they've considered those as their enemies so what I'm saying is both of you are under the law and both of you by the way as it happens uh, you believe in Jesus coming right so you have something in common and both of you by the way you have your parents your forefathers being Abraham you know your cousins mm -hmm. we know that everybody knows that there's no argument about that but your you your fight is political and diplomatical whatever it is that's up to you but what you're asking me what God told me about you what God told me about Jews then this is what I'm telling you I'm telling the truth you're under the law just the fact that you are keeping the Sabbath holy, that just tells me something. Yeah. You know, I am a Christian, I am above the law. What that means, as far as Sabbath is concerned, I'm not getting together, I'm not keeping the Sabbath holy. I am keeping, keeping the Sunday holy, Monday holy, Tuesday holy, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, every day holy. Mm -hmm. Sabbath is no special to me. Mm -hmm. To them in the Old Testament, it was special. It was a resting day that God rested on that day. But that again, it opens up another sermon. I'm not going to get into that because it's getting too long. Because God, when God rested, it doesn't mean actually physically rested. He just looked at his creation and enjoyed it. That's what it means. Simple. The same as you do when you finish off your, your work, your day work. You just look back and just look at the washed dishes, you look at the cleaned house and you just enjoy it. That's when you rest. You don't rest. We do rest because we are physically getting tired sometimes. Mm -hmm. But God doesn't get tired or weary. No. And, and, and as you're listening to me, you're tired now because it's getting too long. <laughs> so what I'm saying is you're under the law, we are not under the law. And our uh, obedience and abide we have to abide by the Holy Spirit we have to walk by the Spirit and that's more difficult than what they're doing because they have a set of rules and laws and they abide by those and they make their own clauses you know if you fail to do this do this one if you fail to do that do do this one you know so they make their own like little windows if they fail to open this door they open that little window uh -huh. uh, if you understand what I'm saying so but we, for us it's, it's, there's no such thing God says Jesus says uh, for instance he says if somebody strike you on the cheek give him the other cheek this is this is different this is a different kettle of fish this is totally different game mm -hmm. not everybody can do that I'm struggling to do that I can't do that you know I, I somebody shoot me I'll shoot them back <laughs> yeah but that's that's how I am I'm I'm like Moses I have I'm a short temper <laughs> but but what I'm saying uh, we are not under the law we are above the law how is that because we are kings and priests we can go into the temple we can go into the Holy of Holies boldly and stand there and pray before Jews couldn't do that yeah. they can't do that it, 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 after Jew, Judaism uh, Christianity came and uh, Christianity or Christ came and says look you're under the law you, you, you cannot fulfill 613 laws every day of your life mm -hmm. you need a sacrifice and they were cutting sacrificing animals bulls and sheep and they were doing all that and they still do that to this day but he says that is not answering anymore that is not covering your sins anymore mm -hmm. your sins have grown so much it's gone to the he to heavens and and you need to have a sacrifice and god has sent his own sacrifice you can't sacrifice an animal anymore the blood of a bull or a sheep doesn't wipe your uh, sins anymore it has to it doesn't cover it used to actually it never it never cut it never wiped it always covered the sin yeah but now but with jesus blood if you believe in his shed blood on the calvary then 
year of sins not only wipe, it's only all wiped away it's gone spiritually mm -hmm. spiritually you're born again physically you still have things to pay, to, to pay back because if you've done sin if you committed sins um, your physical sins in this world you pay back in this world to clear mm -hmm. to you know to, to, to balance yeah, it all I out. I think you'll have to touch on that one another time because that's just another new kettle yeah, yeah. of fish. And, yeah, and this is it. something that most people have never even thought of or, yeah, or so even you, grasped. You've got, you, you are forgiven, your sins are forgiven if you die today, right at that moment when you are asking for repentance of your sins and you believe, you put your trust on the blood of Jesus and the body of Christ, then you're forgiven and that moment, uh, like Jesus says to the thief on his right hand, who says um, uh, when you go to paradise remember me and he says today you will be with me in paradise mm -hmm. and and that just that just tells you a lot of stories that because he puts his trust on him on the cross he says I put my trust in you he says your, your sins are forgiven mm -hmm. so you immediately are forgiven your sins are forgiven you go to heaven but you physically if you're in st this world to stay it's still alive for a few more years or whatever how many years then you have to your physical body will have to pay some penalties because you've committed sin against your own your own physical body mm -hmm. that's another sermon okay let's wrap it up then. so at this moment we're closing for the, for the moment and we'll see you again another another session <laughs>